Hello everyone, hope you're having a good day. This is Sky here and welcome to some Jarrett and Labonte stock car racing. We're going to be going through a complete guide or at least playthrough of this whole game. And of course this first part here will be more of a guide, but the next 10 parts, at least parts 1 through 11, will be, you know, using the same strats or whatever to win the championship races. And then after that, once we get to the bonus car races, you know, there'll be a little more strategy involved. You know, probably starting around part 12 and stuff. But hopefully, if you're having a little trouble getting the achievements in this game, maybe this will be a little helpful. I love this game a lot, and it is... It's a very not well-known PS1 racing game, it, but it's really good, I think. I was just chatting with somebody in the Retro Achievements community yesterday, and I think it's really... I agree with them. It's because of... The title probably is why it's really not that well known. Jarrett Labonte Stock Car Racing, you know, it just doesn't sound that flashy or whatever. And well, I'm not sure why they named it that exactly, but it is uh, basically it's named after a couple of. It's not the NASCAR racers, you know, as you'd expect. It's it's a uh, Jason Jarrett and Justin Labonte, which both of them ended up not really having very big racing careers of course I can't really talk I don't have any racing career in real life but um, it'd be cool if I did but <laughs> do not but yeah uh, it's it's interesting you know but really you know overlooking that like it this game has the best damage feature of any racing game that I've ever played of course you know I haven't played everything but yeah, it's really it, it's just really really fun I love it and I'm excited to be doing this. And uh, show you just real quick our options here. This is basically a clean file. I haven't really done much, not bonuses. Um, just our setup options here. Make sure that you keep mech damage on. You actually can turn that off, but for the achievements, you're going to have to have it on. But, uh, but, you, but you could turn that off technically, and it'll also work for the championships. But we want it to be on so that you can get the achievements. And then our sound. So right now I'm going to keep the music on, but probably after this first championship I'm going to turn it off. And graphic setup, the rival indicator is on. So really I think that's all it is besides my controller. So championship, let's do this. So we're going to do a new game. And now when I did this game several years ago on my channel, I did use Jason Jarrett. So we're actually going to use Justin Labonte this time. We're going to try to get through the World Championship as quickly as possible. And obviously not in this part, but, you know, over the next few parts. Because after that, I'll be able to pick whatever car I want for any championship. So I think that'll be pretty cool. So, yeah, you can be the biography. Here's Jason Jarrett. I'm not going to read all this, but if you're interested, you can, you can do so. Pause it and do that. And Justin Labonte... Got a pretty young start. So, yeah, we're going to use the Bonte, I guess. And, of course, we're going to put our name in here. But, yeah, this game, you know, the graphics aren't the best and stuff. But, what, you know, it's a PS1 game. So, don't be too hard on it. But, like like I said, the gameplay is, is really, really good. And the damage, I mean, the mechanics. I love it. Can't really say anything else. So, we're actually going to do the Mediterranean. Let's do that one first. So, complete a lap of Dijon. So, yeah, the, when you first start, you're always going to have to do a time trial lap. And I'm just going to kind of speed through these loading screens because they take a while sometimes. And you can't really modify anything, you know, for, for that. For the time trials. Now, if you do really well, you won't really have to ever do time trials. But if you, if you have a little trouble, you'll probably have to do time trials pretty pretty frequently. Or I don't think they call them time trials. They call them test drives. So basically like a Gran Turismo license test, so to speak. Basically just like that, actually. But yeah, we have the music here, you know, and I, I'm going to have it for this championship. Most of it isn't bad, but it's just that there aren't that many tracks, and it gets really old after 
after a little while it gets pretty old, but you know, I'll have it on for this championship. And then after that, in the next one, I want want you to hear the pit crew speech because I really like it. I think they did an amazing job. The developers did Codemasters. The pit crew speech is a very interesting mechanic. And it's actually very spot on for the most part. Very spot on. There are a few instances where, like, you, you'll, you won't be in first, somebody else will. You know, and somebody, like, whoever is in first is not you, they might be pr pretty far ahead. And the pit crew speech person might say, oh, they're over five seconds ahead now. But they're really not five seconds ahead. They might be two or three seconds, which is still pretty appreciable. But, you know, anyway, we got that test drive done. And, you know, and the reason I'm doing the Mediterranean is I really want to use this Fiat Maria. It is, it's a car that... I've never really seen in any other game, so I want to use it. I think most people, when they play this, they use the, they do the North American with Jason Jarrett first. So yeah, Dijon, Monza, and Catalonia, those are the three tracks we're going to be racing on in this endeavor here. And I and I will show you part of the replays, like I, at least one lap of each track. So, I'm in the tune car menu now. So, go into the suspension setup. I'm going to lower the springs a little bit. So, that the reason I'm doing this is your car will, just in case you do get off-road, the car will not lose control quite as easily. And the same thing with anti-road bars. Now, these you don't want to lower too much, though. You want to be really careful. And also, just like the suspension, you don't want to lower it too much either. Because then the car will handle really bad if you, you know, you don't want to make it the minimal setting. That's what I'm saying. I usually have it too, too higher than the minimal. So, just bring the anti-row bars down just a tad. And let's see, gears. We're going to want a little more speed, so max our last gear. About 153 is as fast as these cars will go. Okay. And then... The downforce, now, your car will hand, will not take the corners quite as fast, but the difference is pretty insignificant because these cars only have around 240 to 300 horsepower. So, you know, you don't really need a lot of downforce. It's not going to make that much of a difference with the no more powerful than these cars are. And I usually leave my brake bias towards the front because the cars can be a little oversteer in this game. Welcome to the Mediterranean Just a little bit. And the first race That's the, the way they're tuned, you know, I guess. All right. So, yeah, because of the way I adjusted the gears, our launch is a little slower than theirs, but, oh, look, we're taking off now. Look at this. It's worth it. Because the thing is, you hardly ever are going to be below 50 miles an hour anyway. Even on the tightest corners, you can usually keep it above 50. So, you don't really need to have a super fast launch. Yeah, and I'm running off the road. Great drive, Raina. So yeah, you can uh, get off the road a little bit on this track, but you wouldn't want to do this on Monza, I can tell you. Dijon's a little forgiving though. They have like the outer part paved, I guess you could say. Paved or concrete, I don't know what that is. Yeah, look at this, we already got a huge lead. They just can't keep up with our... See, this car with the default settings, but I want to max out around, you know, 130. Well, you saw in the test drive. I don't remember what was the fastest speed I reached in the test drive, but... I'm pretty sure it was... Not as fast as I just got there. And yeah, there's not 
I don't really know if there's any huge advantage for using manual in this. I like manual though because sometimes when I'm playing, I want the car to downshift, you know, and it just won't with automatic, so. But the achievements aren't. I didn't really make any of them very hard for this game. I mean, it, it will. Well, take that back. I probably didn't say that right. They're, they're definitely hard if you've not really played the game before, but once you really practice, like, the hot laps and stuff, I didn't make them, you know, severely difficult. I think it's definitely reasonable, you know. And yeah, we are just uh, destroying them. Let's see if we get a hot lap here. I, I forgot what lap times I made for each track. So yeah, yeah, there we go. Dijon Prenos hot lap. It's our first achievement. Can I reach 150? There's an achievement for reach 150. Oh, I guess I did. I briefly reached it. I probably won't show much of a lot of these replays because you know, it'd be pretty boring. I mean, I just run away with it. <laughs> but I will show you the the beginning at least. Mess that corner up. But yeah, you haven't really got to see the damage yet. But you will. Don't worry. Or if you play this game, you, you definitely know the damage is really good in it. And if you do take damage, um, right, you know, it's blue when nothing's damaged. But if anything gets damaged, it'll turn yellow on this little uh, model here. Or diagram, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, not that bad of a lap. Not that good either, though. Let's All right. Back now at the race well, yeah, show y'all the beginning of this race here. So yeah, had a slow launch, but then we took off. And just like that, we had the lead. I don't know. I think the cars look really good in this Let's game. Oh, and I already got the blowing everyone away achievement. An inspired victory for today's winner, Justin Labate. So yeah, just by winning a race by in over second, 30 seconds. The Pajo 406, Alessandro Tecci. And I like the commentary in this game. Race, they did a really good job with, GM with this too. Wiltord. And I think somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, if you know more about this game than I do. But... I think the people that are in these races, like these race car drivers that you're your your opponents basically. With only one race completed, the championship is of course wide open. I think they are actually people who worked on this game because at least a lot of them are. Some of them may just be fictional or some of them could be actually real you know, other real people. But or some of them could be real drivers, but I'm not sure. But I am I am fairly confident that some of them are people who developed this game. All right, one podium finish. So yeah, our team criteria is to get three podium finishes. I'll explain that in a minute. I didn't do any achievements where you had to meet the team criteria because you know I thought winning the races and stuff was, or winning the championship or getting a trophy in the championship was enough, you know. And each criteria is different. Like if I use a different car besides this Maria, this Fiat, then I'd have a different criteria. Yeah, you do not want to get off of that gravel or whatever that is. Just like in Minecraft, gravel is pretty rough. Will y'all let me by? Jeez, y'all are giving me no space. Look at this. No space, man. Rude. 
Oh, somebody died there. A couple people died. Oh, up to second. But yeah, like I was saying, regarding the team criteria, it's different every time. And I did not make any achievement for that. But but if you do meet the team criteria, you unlock a bonus, which there are achievements for all the bonuses. So you will definitely want to meet the team criteria. So yeah, Monza, one of my favorite tracks. You know, interestingly, like I, I always was a big Gran Turismo fan. I've spent way more hours playing Gran Turismo 1 and 2 than I did playing this game. Um, but I have to say, a lot of the tracks in this game, uh, this game was the first one that I ever played this tracks in. Like, you know, in some games... I don't know. I don't think Gran Turismo ever got Surfer's Paradise or... You know, it wasn't until Gran Turismo 6 when it finally got Bathurst and Brands Hatch. Did it get to Brands Hatch in GT5? I can't remember. But yeah, it was... It was a while. And I had to say Laguna Seca. You know, this game and Gran Turismo 2 were out about the same time. I'm not saying Gran Turismo 2 bad or anything. I love that game. Y'all know it. But it's like its representation of Laguna Seca was far less accurate than what it is in this game. Like this this game depicts Laguna Seca much more accurately. And you know and Monza here. I, I'm pretty sure Monza didn't appear until GT5. Monza's pretty accurate in this game. I mean, honestly, this game is just really good. So underrated. If you love racing games and you've never tried this, highly recommend giving it a try. I don't think you'll regret it. One, recommend one recommendation I have, though, which I'll probably be doing in the next part myself for the next championship, whatever it'll be, is I recommend maybe having you some background music playing while you're <laughs> while you're racing or something else to listen to because this music gets old, you know. It's like I said, it's not bad, but it's just uh there aren't that many tracks and you know, it just gets old after a while. Yeah, I've already said it before, so you probably didn't even hear me say it again. So yeah, only the second race and we're Yeah. If you lower the downforce though and widen your gears like I did you'll be able to we already got the Monza Hall at but yeah if you do if you do those things and then just you know once you really get the controls of the vehicles down in this game and they all handle pretty similarly for the most part Although there's a pretty big difference between the drive trains. You know, this car is front wheel drive. Most of the cars are front wheel drive in this game. The rear wheel drives, you definitely gotta be a little more careful with those. And even the all wheel drives, they can be a little more skittish as well. The front wheel drives though are easy mode, basically, which most of them are. But. Well, you may get lucky and you might not even. Well, the rear wheel drives, they, they handle fine. But... Although, I have to say, the more, like, I haven't really tried the BMW in this game, at least in many years, on world on the world championship mode. But the Holden Commodore on the world championship mode is particularly particularly tough to control I mean well it's just it's not as good as uh, as this front wheel drive counterparts it loses control so easily but it may just be because I don't really know how to tune it you know whereas the front wheel drives they're pretty easy to tune could be that I don't know 
But the whole the same car, the Holden Commodore for the national championship. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I think it drives very well. It's just like when you add an extra 50 to 70 horsepower, it just becomes more unbalanced, I guess you could say. So yeah, watch the first few seconds of this replay. Oh man. Off-road edition. And that Alpha, that Alpha was kind of dirty. How dare he? Look at it. Just give me no space. Rude. There we go. We got past him. I think the replays are really good. Like, I don't know. Just, you know, just another good feature. I mean, you can also have control. You can do different camera views, helicopter view, right overtake, left overtake, close review, side camera, overhead, far rear, orbiting. Orbiting is pretty cool. Suspension view, roof camera, reverse far, floats, head, hood, bumper and track side, and the helicopter, which I think is the... So yeah, you can also rewind, you can or restart it, you can pause it, pause or unpause, you can fast forward it. Yeah, it's good. It's a really good feature. And another 30 second victory. Winning his second race in succession was Justin Labati. In second place, and the Renault Laguna Mama Latizi. Taking four points for third place was GM Ferrero Will Torrey. And just real quick, you could see what everybody else got. Dang, 12th place was over a minute behind. Let's see how today's Pretty goaded. affects the championship. Still at the top of the table at this stage in the series is Justin Labati. Advancing up to second place in the championship, we have GM Ferrero Will Torrey. Making progress up the table to third place, we have Mama Latizi. Hmm. Oh, you know, I didn't even think about it, but I think that Poja 406, sadly, this might be the only championship you can use it in. I wasn't really thinking about that. I, I was trying to do to where I could use... I want to use a different car for each championship, you know. Is the thing is, like, the BMW 328i, you could use it for multiple championships. Or the Alfa Romeo, uh, like, 156. You could use it for multiple championships. But, like, the Pojo 406, I think this might be the only championship you could use it in. Maybe wrong, though. I don't know if it'll appear in the European championship or not. To see. If so, I would... I like to use it for that, maybe. But there are a lot of cars that only appear, you know, once. So I won't be able to use everything, sadly. But I'll try to use as much as I can. Whoa. It's a little bit too fast, I think. All right. Oh. Didn't mean to fast forward that. <laughs> Getting a little fast forward happy. So notice we had a mandatory pit stop on this race. And notice this race is longer, six laps. So yeah, the longer races that are six plus laps in each uh, championship, you're gonna have to pit on those. Oh, I almost got around all of y'all. Almost. Okay, at least he didn't run me off the road. Eh? The sooner I can get around y'all, the better. I don't know why he went over to the right side. <laughs> yeah, that is a sharp corner. Catalonia is one of the tracks that... These corners really tend to sneak up on me. And I will break way too late for them. I find myself going off-road a lot of times on this race. 
But now, since this is a six lap race, this will be our first good opportunity to maybe overlap an opponent. I don't know if we'll be able to do that or not. Depends on how bad the AI do. They, it varies from race to race, like, or from you know time to time. Like sometimes they do really good. Sometimes they do really bad. They actually can crash each other. I know y'all haven't really got to see that very much yet, but we will definitely when we get to more difficult championships, I'm sure. But yeah, they will crash into each other and stuff, and sometimes they'll damage their engines. And if that happens, then you're way more likely to end up overlapping. They easily reach 150 in this race. And already got a big lead. One lap in. Some of them probably have started pitting now. I have a feeling the second place car probably did pit. I'm going to try not to run off the road in this race, but uh, no promises. Well, <laughs> promises are made to be broken if I were to promise, right? <laughs> Could have been worse. Yeah, these corners just sneak up on you. I find Catalonia to be probably one of the most challenging tracks. I don't think Catalonia appeared until, you know, in the GT series. Probably, was it in GT Sport? I don't know. I kind of stopped playing GT Sport. I want to say, though, that it might have appeared in that game. Eventually. And speaking of GT games, I probably will eventually get GT7. I've just been in no hurry about it. And for one thing, everything's so expensive nowadays. Like, God. Seriously. Food has gone up so much. Gas. Of course, gas. That's the thing everybody thinks about. Like five dollars a gallon. In the cheapest areas, you know. It's insane. You know, just a year ago it was half that price. Small little Fiat. Could have taken that faster. But, better than going off into the gravel, right? So yeah, I, I normally play in this view here, but I haven't shown you the other views yet. Of course, if you played this game before, then you know, but maybe I can convince some of you who have never played this game before to give it a try, so maybe some of you watching haven't played it before. But yeah, the different views here. You can also use this inside cockpit view, you know, like, like if you were actually driving the car. It is uh, it's pretty good looking, really. But yeah, I'm just going to stick with this view. Notice when I did my LP of this years ago, I actually used the first person view. But I've gotten a lot better with showing the car using the third person view. 
Okay, and I realize I'm over the halfway point of the race. I probably should have pitted. Hey, and they're just so far behind. Fiat's just too powerful. Another thing I love about this game, aside from the mechanics and just fun gameplay, you know, and all the work they put into the voices and the pit crew speech, the commentary, all that, because it's very, very dynamic, depending on, the, like, Depending on whoever gets what position, the commentary is always different, which I think is cool. Like they've really, they did such a, such an amazing job. But I think aside from that, uh, what was I gonna say? Shoot, dang! Well, so much already thought. I seriously lost it. But yeah, we have to pit. So let's pit. But, um, shoot. No, I really can't think. Oh, I hate it. I hate it when that happens. I had a good thought and I just completely forgot it. <laughs> I guess. At least when you're a potato like I am. Yeah, and once again, I try to take that corner too fast. That That's the corner that probably gets me more than any other. Because it looks so similar to this corner, which you can take a little faster, you know. And also these upcoming corners. But yeah, they put a lot of work into this game. It's very, very dynamic. And the free play mode is... Oh, y'all, there, there are so many different options on free play mode, really. And I, I could have done even more achievements, but... The set was already so big as it was. I feel I feel like it's a pretty solid set as it is. Oh, yeah, I remember what I was saying now. But yeah, one thing I love about this game, like like I'm saying, is they they take so many. Oh, we're overlapping somebody. It's my teammate. Teammate, how dare, how dare you be back here in 12th? Come on, Fiat power. Yeah, what I was saying is, um, I like how they take little granny cars, you know, like a Honda Accord. Or, which, don't get me wrong, those Accords can be pretty fast. You know, Fiat Maria. Renault Laguna, stuff like that. And they tune these babies up, you know, and make them into pretty fierce machines. It is it's actually really, really cool. I don't know if we're going to overlap anybody else. It's like my teammate was just doing really bad. Even though I say he's my teammate, uh, don't 
let it get beyond beyond you that he will run us off the road if he got the chance. <laughs> or at least sometimes I've had my teammate do that to me. I don't know if it's that they're trying to hit somebody else or what, but I'm pretty sure that I've been run over before <laughs> that way. But yeah. Our first six lap race, done. Now, if you did not pit Let's that race, the race again. even if you finished first, you, if you didn't pit, then you would be disqualified. It would uh, basically count you as 12th place, which, yeah, you don't want that to happen, trust me. You know, for obvious reasons. But yeah, you can actually abandon some races and you won't get any points. But you still could end up winning the championship. Now, in order to get the ultimate champion for the 710 points, you will have to get first in every race, which that's definitely the hardest achievement to get, I would say. And just like that, we had the lead. Tell you what, this um, Mediterranean championship is going overly smooth. It's almost eerie. But it will not always go this smooth, I promise you. Let's take a look at and we got Wave around for overlapping somebody. Well, it's another victory and another 10 points for Justin Labati. Today's runner up was Alessandro Tecci. Third place went to Mama Latizzi. Mama Latizzi. Yep, O'Hatton. He was the only one who was overlapped. Let's take a look at the Drivers' Championship. Still in the lead at this stage in the Fiat Morea, Justin Labati. Say that the commentary Doing is so well good. In second is Alessandro Tecci. In third, Mama Latizzi. Uh, I love it. I love the commentary. Monza again. So, yeah, usually in each of these national events, you do each race or each uh, track twice because they're used on with their tracks but some of the national championships have the next race two or i have more tracks so Monza. you may not do each one twice sometimes just do it once like in the north american championship i'm pretty sure y'all do the goodness sake of once because north america has four tracks in this game but enough of that monza again but you know it's a different race we start in a different position and you know you can say the time of day is different and oh he yeah he got me he got me okay. well we almost got half the opposition pass and you're gonna thought you're gonna run me off the road there I don't trust you Okay, I'm going for the clean pass off-road. I will do that a lot, and that's why I like to tune my suspension the way I do. Because a lot of times it's way easier to just make your clean, no-contact pass, you know, just by making it off-road. When that's an option. And we have the lead. One minute into the race. Just like that, they are, they're gone. You know, some tracks though in this game, the AI does a lot better on. We'll be seeing those later. I would say Silverstone and the British Championship, Hockenheimring and the German Championship and Buenos Aires and the South and Central American Championship. Those three tracks, the AI opponents do way better in. They're way more aggressive. Oh, it's Sugo. Sugo in the Japanese championship. Can't forget that one. Oh, no, I can't. So, yeah, those races will be more challenging, I think, definitely. Mm. 
At least for me, it may just be that I'm not that good for strikes, I don't know. But, but yeah, I usually have more difficulty with those. I love this little car. Good old Fiat Maria. Bet this. I'm pretty sure this music probably is all copyrighted. Not that I really care that much about that, but. But yeah, in the next part, whatever championship I'll end up choosing to do next, I'll definitely show y'all the. Definitely show y'all the. Uh, shoot, what's it called? And I'm driving like a goat. The pitch crew speech is what I meant to say. I think this is the one song that I don't really like in this. Uh, you know, out of the set, the music for this game. Not a big fan of this song because that has this long period where it's just kind of screeching. I'm like, whoa, why, <laughs> why? Which it'll probably demonstrate pretty soon. Coming up to, it looks like they're about 15 to 25 seconds behind. Yeah, here we go. Here's the part where it just sounds like. Sounds like a school bus running over a long piece of metal and scraping it along the road. That's what it sounds like to me. Not that I've ever heard that particular thing happen, but you know what I mean. I can imagine it. You know, or maybe, probably something more of you could relate to. Maybe a, maybe a chalk riding on the chalkboard. Chalk just scraping the chalk chalkboard, you know. I don't know. Depending on how old you are, you might not even know much about chalkboards. Like when I was going to school. When I was going to school, they we had chalkboards in some classrooms. Now though, not really very many chalkboards left. But yeah, basically what it sounds like. I don't know. The weather is... I guess I could talk about the weather. The weather is pretty good in this game, really. I don't really think we see very much in the national events. But we definitely will when we get to the international. We'll start seeing more adverse weather. And whenever it's storming or raining, the cars definitely do handle a little bit different. Basically, you, you have to break earlier and you can't corner quite as quite as fast. Let's take a look at the from the it's not the huge time. effects. It's not like Gran Turismo 6, you know, when the water level's 100%. You know, it's not like that. It's where... But, but it's definitely... There definitely is a notable difference. Our lap times will be quite a bit slower when we do the same tracks, you know. You'll see. Oh, man. At least as much time as I spend uh, on this I saw it at least being the nerd that I am but yeah good old Monza alright let's move on another 31 second lead standings. well he does it again making it four consecutive wins for you got Kristen it. Labate more where that came from. Second for his third podium finish of the series was Mama Latizi. In third place, and the Renault Laguna, Lionel Maney. All right, let's see where everybody else got if you're interested. Oh, Hatton once again bring it up the rear. <laughs> Justin Labate leads the way after four races. Advancing up to second place in the championship, we have Mama Latizi. Dropping down to third place is Alessandro Tecci. All right. Probably don't need to save this frequently, but... 
Basically, I guess if you do screw up, you could just load your save, you know, and you'll be fine in that. Like, if you need to stop in the middle of a championship, that's perfectly fine. Your your achievements will not be hurt, you know, by doing that. All right, so, yeah. Oh, we actually do have rain on this race. Now, it's a really light rain, though. I'm trying not to kill my opponents here, but I kind of am. Okay, you're giving me no space, buddy. Oh, my car is a little dented. <laughs> but not bad. We're going to move on just fine. But yeah, since the rain is so light, it's not really going to make a huge difference, I don't think. If at all. At least I can't really notice any difference from when we did this track before. Let's see the windshield wipers going. It's cool. Seems like they're keeping up better this race. Seems like they're going super hardcore mode now. I swear they just seemed to die on the very first race we did on this very track. Cruising along. So yeah, if you don't feel like messing with the suspension, just just mainly the two changes you definitely want to make are the downforce and the gearing. Those are the two changes I definitely recommend. Yeah. One more race after this. One more about it. Catalonia. Come on, little Fiat. Almost there. Maybe my lap times, maybe they were a little bit worse. I don't really remember exactly Let's what I got. But now at the race highlights. I'm just going to skip that. Let's see yeah, only 20 team. seconds behind that time, so they did flip it better. Labonte has now made it five wins in five races. What a performance. Today's runner-up was Mama Letizzi. Finishing in third place and finishing on the podium for the third time was Alessandro Tecci. Yeah. 
Oh, oh, Hatton, what is your deal, bruh? You just, Let's see how today you just love in that 12th place, ain't you? Justin Labonte leads the way after five races. In second place, we have Mama Letizzi. In third, the Pajo 406, Alessandro Tecci. Pretty sure uh, Mama Letizzi and Alessandro Tecci are pretty locked in the second and third place. Unless something really radical happens on this last race, which you know, probably won't. I mean, even if they were to just completely bomb, I mean, it would be very hard for them to the championship go down to, to you know, Catalonia. from their position. Is that a pretty good game? As long as they get one point, you know, or whatever, they'll probably be fine. Alright, oh, this song again. See, we just heard it and it's already coming back for us. It knows we love it. Why did I shift down the first gear? I'm tripping. I'm just getting shift happy, ain't I? Alexandria. No. Alexandria, whatever his name is. Is really trying to get second place, isn't he? But Mama Letizia, I'm pretty sure that's who's right behind him, so. He probably is. Oh, somebody died there, though, didn't they? It might have been uh, Letizia who died. Saw somebody run off the road. It looked like that Renault Laguna. This part of the song ain't that bad. It's just the screeching part that I don't like. Don't mean to diss on your music. Well, I missed it. I missed it. I think I might have gotten all the achievements for the hot laps in the Mediterranean. But I wasn't paying the most attention, to be honest with y'all. So I might have missed one, I don't know. I would say after this recording's over. I mean, I think we'll see all these tracks again in the European Championship, so, and we'll have a little bit faster of a car there. So, if you're having trouble getting the hot laps and the national events, don't worry. You'll get a little faster car in the international events, and you'll revisit almost all of the same, all of the tracks. So you know, I have another chance. That is one important thing to note. I don't even know how long this recording is, but none of these championships take between, you know, 33 and 40 minutes. The national ones do anyway. The international take longer, obviously, because the race they're longer, and there are more races. Only one extra race, but, you know, hey, it makes a difference. And almost messed up that same corner again. But yeah, imagine with showing a little bit of the replays and, you know, the race commentary, you know, that's going to all add a few minutes. Probably at least 10 minutes, so. This video probably around 45 minutes, if I had to guess.
All right, last race or la last lap of this whole championship, this whole video. Is almost bad. Seems like the as the other races are as bad on this track as I am, apparently. Nothing like what we're gonna see on Buenos Aires. <laughs> and boom. We made it. Nah, we don't need to. Let's see 30 second lead again. Incredibly, Ooh, Latese did die, didn't he? For Justin Labate. And eighth. Following him in second place was Alessandro Tecci. You know, Alexandre Otechi probably got second Mr. because of that. Yeah, I bet they went up and oh, oh, Hatton. What is this, the third or fourth time in a row that you got last? Let's Bruh. Yep. Tetchy got second. Latizzi slipped. Aside and taking the championship title in the Fiat Morea, Justin Labati. He certainly proved that he can mix it with the pros, and who knows what is next for him. Some great performances throughout the series were not quite enough for the title in second place for the Optima Plus team, Alessandro Tetchy. After some strong performances throughout the series, in third place, and the Renault Laguna, Mama Latizzi. Yep. And you can see here we had two racers who got no points. That was O'Hatton, big surprise there, and Tasso. All right. That is the Mediterranean Championship, and hopefully, at least maybe the first few minutes of this video may be more helpful. If you're having a little difficulty, you know, other than that, just practice, you know, like practice getting uh, the mechanics, the driving down, you know, because each racing game handles a little bit differently. I think this one handles pretty good in my opinion, but, you know, everybody has their own opinion. And we got the Mediterranean Championship champion because we got first place and we also just, you know, the trophy for third or better. And we met the team criteria, so we unlocked the bonus. And we unlocked the Peugeot 306 and the Plymouth Prowler. So now we have some new offers here. We have, and we don't have to do a time trial either. So we have the Japanese Championship, North American, Australian, German, and South and Central American. Notice the BMW 328i. It pops up a lot. So well, let's go ahead and save this. So, looking at your career here, I guess I could explain this real quick. i got to get 140 points to move to the international level. So, basically, I just need to do two more championships. And then we'll move to international and then, you know, do a couple of those or get enough points and then we can move to the world. So, basically, that's how that works. But let's quit and I'll kind of show you what we unlocked. So, you can see our records here. Uh, just a little under 37 minutes for Mediterranean. And, you know, that's all we did. If you go to options now, which bonus do we unlock? We unlock motion blur. So I guess the Mediterranean Championship always unlocks motion blur. And obviously we're not going to enact that. If you do enact a bonus, though, it will not have any effect on championship mode. But yeah, you can do um, 
ch change whatever you want there. And you can see we unlocked these two bonus cars. You you automatically have these four. These first four. The Ace, the Audi TT, Mitsubishi FTO, and Ford Mustang GT. And these are the first two you unlock. Well, yeah, y'all, we're going to go ahead and stop right here. Hope y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, everybody stay awesome. Goodbye, everyone.